Oh yes, hello viewers, my name is Nathan Matovu here at Kisa Projects. Remember, Kisa Projects is the home for entrepreneurs who are located here in Koma Mogaoku Mukaga along Gayaza Road. Today I'm here basically to talk about soap production and basically bar soap production. So I've been getting a lot of inquiries from people who have been getting training in soap production from, from other centers that they get a lot of challenges in their course of manufacturing the soap. So today I'm here to help them solve up their problems or their manufacturing problems however to avoid such cases it is best for you to come here at Kisa projects for practical training we are always open mind saturday 8 a.m goes at 6 p.m and our training people around the bus of production the just gonna shillings a hundred thousand to start with what is meant by the term soap scientifically soap is referred to as a salt of fatty acids achieved through a chemical process called saponification so for you to learn how to manufacture quality soap, first of all, you have to understand what's meant by the term saponification. Scientifically, saponification refers to the grouping of a strong alkaline solution with fatty acids to form a salt. Remember, I've just, I, I have just defined that soap is a salt of fatty acids. So when I say saponification refers to the grouping of a strong alkaline solution with fatty acids to form a salt, I'm meaning to form soap. Because I've just said that soap is a salt. However, you have two types of salts. There's what we call the potassium salts, and there's what we call the sodium salts. Potassium salts are always soaps that are soft or in liquid form, and sodium salts are always soaps that are in bulk form or in powdered form. So basically, for me today, I'm here to talk about the sodium salts. Why do we call them sodium salts? We call them sodium salts because we shall use sodium hydroxide in the course of manufacturing such salts. And for us to manufacture the liquid soaps or the soft soaps, we shall always use potassium hydroxide as our strong alkaline in the course of manufacturing such salts or such soaps. So, let me just go back a little bit at saponification. I've just said that saponification refers to the grouping of a strong alkaline solution with fatty acids to form a salt. So, our strong alkaline solution can either be the grouping of sodium hydroxide with water or potassium hydroxide with water so i get that aqueous solution i group it or i dissolve it in my fatty acids and my end product will be a salt now what are fatty acids scientifically fatty acids are carboxylic acids of longer fatty chains some are saturated and some are unsaturated we have eight fatty acids four of them being saturated and four of them being unsaturated the saturated fatty acids are lowlic minisitic palmitic and stalic acids those are four saturated fatty acids now these saturated fatty acids will help to contribute on the three qualities of a good bar of soap and those are hardiness how hard a bar of soap should be a good bar of soap should be firm it should be strong mild and durable not too hard like like a piece of wood that is what we call the hardiness hardiness defines the firmness of a soap bar of soap whereby a good bar of soap should be strong mild and durable so quite number two that we shall obtain from the saturated fatty acids is cleansing Cleansing is a bit of the soap to remove oily materials or greasy substances from the areas of application. Or the bit of the soap to do the cleaning part of it. The word cleansing comes from the word to clean. Then quite number three is bubbly leather. Bubbly leather measures the cleansing abilities of the soap. So those three qualities of a good bar of soap, we shall obtain them from the saturated fatty acids that we shall use in our soap production. I've said you have four saturated fatty acids and these are low leak, mesitic, palmitic and static fatty acids. However, I also have four unsaturated fatty acids. These are resinoleic, we have linoleic, we have linolenic and we also have oleic fatty acids. So those are the four unsaturated fatty acids. These four unsaturated fatty acids will give us the conditioning properties in our bar of soap or they will give us the other two qualities of a good bar of soap and these are 
conditioning. Conditioning refers the amount of moisture left on the skin after rinsing. A good product or a good laundry product should leave the skin of the user with some bit of moisture content on, on the skin. If you use any product and it washes off the entire moisture required on your skin, that product will leave your skin totally dry or it will drain water from your skin and remain with a dry skin and such products are dangerous to our skin. So a good bar of soap should be able to leave the skin oily even after rinsing with, with water. So those are, what, those are what we call the conditioning properties. However, it will also give us the creamy lather properties. Just a moment, we have a client. So, having talked about the fatty acids, we have just known that all the five qualities of a good bar of soap, we obtain them from the fatty acids we decide to use. The five qualities of a good bar of soap, I've just mentioned them. We have hardness, cleansing, conditioning, bubbly lather, and creamy lather. And all those qualities, we obtain them from the eight fatty acids we decide to use in our soap production. Four of them being saturated and four of them being unsaturated. I have my sample bars of soap here that I want to show you and I want to help you determine how someone can come up with a quality product like the ones I'm having right here. Help me with some sample bars of soap here like, like the blue one and the white one. So these are our sample bars of soap. This one is white, then this one is blue. Hope my bars of soap are being seen clearly, cameraman. So, this is white, this is blue. These two sample bars of soap have different qualities or different features. Okay, they may be of the same quality, but they have different features or they perform differently if I happen to use them in the wash, in the wash solutions. I have here blue and brown. These ones, they are molarly the same. Maybe it's just the color changing. In the course of manufacturing these soaps blue and brown, we use brittle, brittle oils. I'll talk more about brittle oils as we are continuing with our video coverage here. So when I'm manufacturing these ones, I use brittle oils. I'll explain why, why I use brittle oils in the course of manufacturing these. So here I have pure white and I have off-white. In the course of manufacturing these ones, I use hard oils or I may happen to use one bit of oil being a hard oil and another bit of oil. Hard oils are always high in mesitic fatty acids and another bit of oil. I may happen to use an oil that is high in mesenoraic fatty acid to give me the conditioning, the, co the conditioning properties. What determines the quality of the soap? In soap production, there's what we call the total fatty matter percentage or something usually abbreviated as TFM, meaning total fatty matter. This is one of the most important characteristics describing the quality of a good bar of soap and it is usually specified in commercial values. It is defined as the total amount of fatty matter or fatty acid. Remember I've said that fatty acids are carboxy carboxylic acids of long alphatic chains that can be separated by splitting a mineral acid usually hydrochloric acid. So that's what we mean by TFM. That one describes the quality of a good bar of soap. We have two grades of soap that can be acceptable on the East African Standards or the Ugandan National Bureau of Standards. There's what we call grade one soap or commonly referred to as pure soap and there's also what we call grade two soap or commonly referred to as built stroke filled laundry bar soap. For one to manufacture grade one soap or pure laundry bar soap, the total fatty matter percentage of that soap should not be lower than 62%. However, for one to manufacture built stroke filled laundry bus soap, the total fatty matter percentage should not go less than 50%. So total fatty matter percentage will help us to determine how best our soap is good in the wash solution or on the human skin. Remember laundry bus soap basically here in, in, in Africa, we can categorize as you can categorize it as you know purpose so because we not only use it for washing clothes but sometimes to cannabis circle we use it for bathing as well so it should as well be user friendly on our on our skins so 
you should learn how to find out the total fatty matter percentage of your soap for you to know that you have a pure bar of soap or whether you have a built stroke filled laundry bar soap you can test the quality of your soap your soap, yourself even before taking it to either government laboratories or private laboratories how can you test the quality of your soap hello you are at isa projects and we are the best when it comes to hands-on scaling not only in soap production you have a package of over 30 projects and soap is one of them how to test the quality of your soap get a sample of your soap you can get like a small bit of your soap immerse it in distilled water for at least an hour at around 25 to 30 degrees celsius then after the soap you should immerse in this water should be completely cured so get a sample of your cured bar of soap and immerse it in this water for an hour between 25 to 30 degrees celsius then after your soap when you when you when you immerse it or when you soak it in this water for an hour it should not disintegrate or it should not disintegrate after the dried soap the dried soap the one that you had immersed in distilled water and now you moved it in, in distilled water and you leave it at room temperature for another approximately 25 hours that dried soap it should not crumble or crack if your soap neither disintegrates nor crumbles or crack you are purely sure that you have quality soap that even if you take it to the national bureau of standards for testing you will pass the quality standards required for your for your soap however yes you have known how to tell whether you have quality a soap or you have uh under value or under quality or how to tell that you have uh, under quality soap or uh, under value soap the next thing how can you manufacture good bar of soap the only secret in manufacturing good bar of soap is in the term saponification value the number of milligrams required the number of milligrams of lye when i say lye, i mean caustic soda the number of milligrams of caustic soda when i say caustic soda i mean sodium hydroxide required to completely saponify one gram of a specific fat is known as a saponification value of that fat for example if i'm manufacturing my soap and let's say I'm giving an example, but we don't use this in soap production. If you want to know what you use in soap production, you better come here at Kisa Projects for training. Our training fees just, you can earn shillings at 100,000. And our training course lasts for just four hours. It's as well done, practically even go back with samples you have made in the ring session. I was saying that the number of milligrams of lye or caustic soda required to complete saponify one gram of a, of a specific fat is known as saponification value. I was giving you an example. If I'm using a fat, let's say let me okay let me give you a clear a clear example let me say i'm using palm oil in soap production i'm using palm oil to manufacture soap and i don't know the supplementation value of that palm oil remember i will use the supplementation value of the oil i'm using to determine the amount of caustic soda required for that particular oil caustic soda is an extremely dangerous chemical it can cause harms or it can cause burns if it goes onto your skin it can cause blindness if it goes into your eyes it is poisonous if you swallow it so we should always happen to use it with caution if i don't use it properly it will end up making the product i've manufactured as well very corrosive to the consumers or the people who are using my product i will be the one the manufacturer to suffer the repercussions so you should take caution when you're manufacturing such chemical product like soap production however if you come up with a good product it will still remain good to a human skin not only the human skin but even to the environment and the fabrics where we use our soap basically if you're manufacturing laundry laundry bath soap the soap makers of yesteryear they didn't have readily available scientific data like the ones we are having here at kisa projects the data is for some location values if you happen to manufacture soap and use this amount of caustic soda than the ones that are required for your particular oils you are using soap will not come out as in soap will fail to homogenize you try to be mixing soap but it will fail 
to homogenize, we end up separating into oil material and water kind of solution. So you end up losing the entire chemicals or the entire soap solution and it won't turn into soap, so it will end up being a wastage. So soap makers of yesteryear, they used, okay, they were affected by such challenges. However, if they happen to use more amounts of caustic soda than the ones required, for instance, I'll give you an example. If I'm, if I'm using an oil that requires, let's say, 50 grams of caustic soda, but I'm not certain. Instead of using 50, let me say I use 40 grams instead of 50. If I use 40 grams for those particular oil that require 50 grams of caustic soda, the 40 grams I've used, they will get dissolved in the bit of oils that I've used that requires the 40 grams of caustic soda. However, I remain with an independent value of oils, which is, which is not saponified because it lacks caustic soda into it. So that amount of oil not being saponified, it will start fighting with the water I have used in dissolving the caustic soda solution. And scientifically, oils and water can't dissolve in one another. So that's why I will not come up with the product if, however much I try to mix or to blend my soap. However, if I happen to use too much caustic soda than the required, maybe I need 50 grams of caustic soda, but I happen to use 60 grams of caustic soda instead of the 50 that, that are required. The oils will consume all the other 50 grams of caustic soda that I need, but I will remain with an independent value of caustic soda, which is 10 grams. However, caustic soda can fully dissolve in water. It means my soap will come out or it will saponify and it will saponify quickly. But it will remain with an independent value of caustic soda, which is 10 grams, that will end up affecting either the fabrics or the skin of my the skin of the users of my product. Hence, my product won't be appreciated on the market. It will be dangerous. However, when you come here at Kisa Projects, we have the subproduction value of over 100 plus all that you can use in soap production. Or you can decide to buy our training manuals or ebooks. These are our training manuals or ebooks. It gives you all what you need in soap production. You can buy it here at Kisa Projects at just a fee of Ugandan shillings, 50,000. This is our ebook. We can even send it. We can even send you an electronic version of it or a PDF version of this book. Uh, via your email or via your WhatsApp contact. That you just pay 50,000 our mobile contact, then we send you. It gives you the qualities of a good bar of soap. It explains them very well. The grades of soap. So, uh, simple way to test the effectiveness of your round bar soap. Fats, oil with their fatty acids and a non saponification value. In this training manual ebook, we talk about the saturated fatty acids and the unsaturated fatty acids, the saponification chart. Uh, we also talk about uh, here that it is measured constantly by weight, not by volume, calculating and measuring of water, how to calculate and measure water. Uh, in the same book, we have a list of oils with their saponification value when we are using either sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. So all this is a list of all that you can use in soap, in soap production. So you can buy this ebook at Kisa Projects. We talk about various raw materials you can use in soap production and giving you their functions. All these are raw materials you can use in soap production. It has sample recipes or sample formulas for soap production at a commercial scale of production. Procedures Content of the formulas we give you, or the fatty acid content of the formulas we give you, and other and other things. So you can buy this ebook at Kisa Projects at just a fee of Ghana shillings and of Ghana shillings fifty thousand. Or you can decide to train with us online. Our online training fees Ghana shillings a hundred thousand. Those are paying. Those who are paying in US dollars, you have to pay forty five US dollars for online online training. However, when you subscribe for our online Training I will give you a copy of an electronic book or of an ebook in PDF form. It as well comes with the online training fees you pay. When you pay for online, we shall send you a training link to your WhatsApp. So you just click on that training link and text you to your training session in Laundry Bus of Production. Those who are paying in Ghanaian shillings, they will have to pay 100,000 Ghanaian shillings, and those who are paying in US dollars, they will have to pay. 
45 US dollars for online training. I remain Nathan Matovi at Kisa Project. Those who want to understand more on soap production, better come here at Kisa Project and we train you. We are the only trusted home for entrepreneurs with proven industrial manufacturing skills. I remain Nathan Matovi here at. Bye bye.